Hello, good morning grade 5 students. Welcome to your science class. Thank you for being on time and thank you for being here. I am your teacher for today, Teacher Jodea Christine, but you can call me Teacher Dea. But first, before we start, let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our loving God, we praise and thank you for the blessings you have given to us. Thank you for giving us a chance to continue learning amidst the pandemic that has caused a lot of changes in our lives. Bless us with the wisdom to understand our lesson and the joy to learn with our classmates. Bless also our teachers as they impart to us the value of learning. Help us to become children you want us to be. This we pray of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our virtual classroom rules, first, be on time. Act like you're at school. Sit in one spot during class. Keep yourselves muted. Turn on your video. Raise your virtual hand if you want to talk or if you want to say something. Listen to whoever is talking. No eating during class. And most importantly, have fun and do your best. Make sure you have the following before we start. Number one, paper. Number two, pencil or pen. Number three, copy of your answers from the asynchronous activity. Number six, light it up. Let us review. Answer true if the statement is true and answer false if the statement is true false. Heat can make materials expand. True or false? True. Dark colored materials absorb more heat than light colored materials. True or false? True. Not all materials can absorb heat. True or false? False. The correct answer is all materials can absorb heat. Clear materials absorb heat better than colored materials. True or false? False. The correct answer is, colored materials absorb heat better than clear materials. Light colored materials reflect heat. True or false? True. Matter with high temperature moves faster. True or false? True. Matter contracts as its temperature increases. True or false? False. The correct answer is matter expands as its temperature increases. Last item. Brick stones are poor conductor of heat. True or false? False. The correct answer is, brick stones are a good conductor of heat. Good job, everybody! 
Okay, class, I think you are ready for our topic for today, which is electricity and magnetism. Here are my lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you students are expected to first infer the conditions necessary to make a bulb light up and the effects of changing the number or types of components in a circuit. Number two, explain the importance of electricity to your daily activities. Number three, assemble a functioning electric circuit. Observe the pictures shown in the screen, picture A and picture B. What have you observed when the flashlight was turned on as you see in picture B? You can observe that the flashlight in picture B is now uh, turned on and produces light. What makes the flashlight work? Electricity makes the flashlight work. How does electricity makes the flashlight work? The electricity comes from the battery of the flashlight and that's how the electricity makes the flashlight work. What are the components, the other components inside the flashlight that makes it work? We already mentioned the battery. Uh, some components inside the flashlight are also wires and a bulb. For those who have already answered their uh, a synchronous activity that I have given yesterday, you have um, extra points. And for those who did not answer it yet, it's okay. Let us all watch this video. The goal of activity A, light it up, is to light up the bulb using a battery. Objective to assemble a functioning electric circuit. Note, please be careful in performing the activity because it might harm you. Please ask an adult to help you or guide you in doing this activity. Materials, we have the D battery, one watt bulb with bulb socket, wire, and some tools. For those who will use the lighter's bulb, this is how you will carefully remove the bulb. First, unscrew this part of the lighter. Carefully remove the batteries. And carefully remove the bulb and make sure you did not damage or broke the wire in the bulb. Method Number one, take the battery and fix two copper wires, one on each terminal with the use of electrical tape. I already um, cut the wires to expose the coppers and place it on the negative and the positive terminal of the battery and secure it with electrical tape. Number two, fix one end of the exposed copper wire to the cylindrical metal base of the bulb with the use of electrical tape. So this is where you will attach the wires. For the um, bulb from the lighter, you will attach this to this wires these two wires 
and then for a bulb like this you will attach it to the cap and to the electrical contact of the bulb and for those who will use light bulb with socket unscrew one part of the socket and fix one end of the exposed copper wire to it make sure to put the copper wire between the screw and the metal part of the socket secure it by screwing back the screw to its original position Number three, take another copper wire and fix its exposed end to the base of the bulb with the use of electrical tape. Just do what you did on the previous step but on the other side of the socket and place the bulb on the socket. Make sure your hand is not sweaty because it might electrocute you. Just wipe your sweaty hands from time to time. Number four, now connect the bulb to the battery in different ways. Observe the reference photos and recreate it with your materials. Case A I just twisted the wire from the battery and from the bulb to connect them together and secure it with an electrical tape. For those who do not have the, so the um, uh, socket, you can directly connect the electrical contact of the bulb and the cup of the bulb through the wire from the battery. Just be careful in handling it because when it gets hot, it might electrocute you. You can also use this method if you have the bulb from the lighter. For the case B, For the KC, be careful in handling the wires. This is for case D.
This is for case E. And lastly, case F. Congratulations to those uh, students who already answered um, or uh, performed this asynchronous activity. For those students who haven't performed this activity yet, good luck and I hope you will follow the instructions to avoid harmful effects. Thank you so much for watching what case or cases light up the bulb case a and case f light up the bulb why do you think some cases light up the bulb and some cases did not light up the bulb Because some cases have um, the wires disconnected, while some case that's why the bulb did not light up, and some cases have all the wires connected together, that's why it lit up. Observe the picture shown in the screen. What do you think this is called? This is a simple electric circuit. Before we know what a, what a simple electric circuit is, let us first know what is an electric current. An electric current is the movement of electrons along a path and flows from negative to positive. So an electric current is a collection of moving electrons that flows along a path. An electric current is also compared to a flowing stream of water. Why? Because just like the flowing stream of water, electric current also flows along a path. And the path that the electric current flows through is the electric circuit. Now, simple electric circuit can consist of battery, a bulb, and wires that connect the two terminals of the battery to the ends of the bulb. Here are the common components of the simple electric circuit. Observe the picture shown in the screen. I want you to focus on the labeled parts of the, of the dry cell or the battery. Which parts of the battery was touched by the wires to create a simple electric circuit? The parts were positive terminal and the negative terminal. What is the function of the battery in the simple electric circuit?
battery. It is the source of electric energy. It provides the energy that makes the electricity flow. Observe the picture shown in the screen. I want you to focus on the labeled parts of the wire. Which part of the wire was touched by the battery and bulb to create a simple electric circuit? It is the exposed copper wire. What is the function of the wire in the simple electric circuit? Wire. It links the power it links the power supply with the object. Conducting wires such as copper and aluminum are commonly used. Observe the picture shown in the screen. I want you to focus on the labeled parts of the bulb or light bulb. Which parts of the light bulb was touched by the wires to create a simple electric circuit? It was the cap and the electrical contact. What is the function of the bulb in the simple electric circuit? Bulb. The load or the object that uses the electrical energy. This can be a bulb, an electric motor, or any electrical appliance. Or electric appliance. Observe the picture shown in the screen. We have simple electric circuit A and simple electric circuit B. What is the difference between the simple electric circuit A compared to the simple electric circuit B? Simple electric circuit A has a switch. What is the function of the switch in the simple electric circuit? Switch. The controlling device which is used to open or close a circuit. The switch itself that is made of a material that is a conductor, but its handle is an insulator. Case F is an example of a closed or complete circuit. Teacher, what is a closed or complete circuit? Closed or complete circuit is when current can flow from the battery through the wire, through the bulb, and back to the battery. In this case, the bulbs light up. A complete or a closed circuit is like a cycle. All the components are connected to each other. Case B is an example of an open circuit. What is an open circuit? Open circuit is when a bulb in an open circuit does not light up because electricity does not have a complete path to flow through. Open circuit is the opposite of the closed or complete circuit because in the open circuit, um, some components are not connected. In our example, the wire, the wire in the example is disconnected. That's why it is called an open circuit. And that means that the cycle is not complete. Thus, it did not light up the bulb. Okay, let's have an icebreaker. The title of the activity is Pass the Word by Elevate Experiences YouTube channel. So, here is how we do the activity. I will hold an invisible ball and then I will say 
a random word and then before I throw the ball to the person I want to pass the ball to I will say their name for example um, tree willow and then willow will catch the ball and say a random word and then say the name of the person she wants the ball to pass to okay we only have three minutes to do it and after um, the timer runs out you will bring the ball back to me okay and then we'll wrap it up and that's the end of our activity or our icebreaker I will start Kittens, Willow June Okay, time is up. Fast invisible ball to me. Okay, thank you. Good job, everyone. I hope you have fun. Okay, observe the picture shown in the screen. What diagram is this? We have the battery, we have the switch, we have the light bulb. So this is a schematic diagram circuit. It is a diagram used to illustrate electric circuits through symbols. It is used by electrical engineers in building electrical circuits at home and establishments. This diagram is used by electrical engineers to communicate their ideas to other engineers. This simple, uh, this schematic diagram circuit um, 
have the plans, have the arrangement, have the components needed to install electric circuits in our homes, in buildings, and other establishments. So there are two types of electric circuit. I want you to watch this video. Take note of the um, details that you think is important or are important. Let's experiment a little bit with circuits. As we discussed, electricity will only flow on a closed circuit such as the one shown on the screen. Notice that the electrons flow through the wire and each of the bulbs before they return to the battery. If one of the wires breaks, a gap occurs in the circuit and all the lights go out. When lights are lined up one after the other on a circuit like these lights are, it is called a series circuit. The problem with a series circuit is that when one light burns out and its filament breaks, it creates a gap in the circuit. All the lights go out because electricity won't be able to flow to the other bulbs. This problem can be solved with a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, the wires that are connected to light bulbs run parallel to each other rather than having all the bulbs in a row. This means that one light can burn out or be removed and the other lights on the circuit will stay lighted. For example, if we remove the light that is closest to the battery, the other two lights don't go out because each light is connected in a way that the electrons have a complete path to travel to the positive side of the D-cell battery. Now let's practice what we've discussed about circuits with an activity. What are the two types of electric circuit? The two types of electric circuit are series circuit and parallel circuit. What is a series circuit? Series circuit is a type of circuit with only one path that an electric current can flow through. What is a parallel circuit? A parallel circuit is a type of circuit with more than one path that an electric current can flow through. Observe the pictures shown in the screen. We have Christmas light A and Christmas light B. Christmas light A is an example of what type of circuit? It is an example of a parallel circuit. Christmas light B is an example of what type of circuit? It is an example of a series circuit. If you are going to buy a Christmas light, um, what would you prefer? A Christmas light with a parallel circuit or a series circuit? Now, let us see the effects of changing the number of, ty of types or components in a circuit. This is the part uh, activity B on the light it up activity 6. The asynchronous activity that uh, I have given yesterday. The goal of activity B, light it up, is to see the effects of changing the number or type of components in a circuit.
objective to assemble a functioning electric circuit. Note, please be careful in performing the activity because it might harm you. Please ask an adult to help you or guide you in doing this activity. Observe the reference photos and recreate it with your materials. So this is case A. It includes two batteries and a bulb. I use the um, bulb with a socket in here. I attach two batteries. The other end, the positive terminal was attached to the negative terminal of the other battery. And then I turn off the extra lights to see how well it glow how much light it produces and then in this case i use the bulb from the lighter i use the same two batteries i turned off the extra lights to see how much it glows and this is case B three batteries and a bulb I attach another battery a third battery to the single bulb with a socket and then this is how it glows I turned off the extra lights. This is how much it glows. And then in this one, I use three AA batteries for the bulb of the lighter. I use copper wires. Copper wires like this one. To connect the battery and the bulb. This is how much it glows. For case C, we will use two batteries and two light bulbs. I turned off the extra lights to see how much it glows. And in this part, I use the bulb from the lighter, two bulbs from the lighter, and then two AA batteries. Congratulations to those uh, students who already answered um, or uh, performed this asynchronous activity. For those students who haven't performed this activity yet, good luck and I hope you will follow the instructions to avoid harmful effects. Thank you so much for watching okay class based from the video that you have just watched which case lights up the bulb or the bulbs the brightest and the dimmest so we have the brightest glow which is case B, the dimmest glow, case C. Define how changing the number of batteries or battery affected the glow of the bulb or bulbs. Changing in number of batteries. It can affect the glow of the bulb in a circuit. It could make the bulb glow dimmer or brighter. In case B, 
we have three batteries compared to KC, which only have two batteries. And the number of batteries affected how the light bulb glow. That is why case B have the brightest glowing bulb and KC have the dimmest glowing bulbs. Define how changing the number of bulb or bulbs affected the energy the batteries or battery can distribute. Changing in number of bulbs. It can affect the amount of electrical, electrical energy the bulb or bulbs will receive. It could make the bulb glow dimmer or brighter. So in case B, we have one light bulb and three batteries. And then in case C, we have two light bulbs and two batteries. Three batteries provided electrical energy for a single bulb in case B, while in case C, only two batteries provided electrical energy for the two light bulbs. That is how case B glows brighter than case C, and that is how changing in number of bulbs affects the amount of energy the batteries can give or the bulbs will receive. Summary How to make a simple electric circuit using a battery. How does changing the components of a simple electric circuit affect the glow of the bulb? How important do you think is electricity to your daily life? Generalization Our generation is a time where electricity was already discovered, and since then, we needed it in everything we do. We have come dependent on electricity. From the moment we wake up to eating breakfast, taking a bath, to the moment we go back to sleep. A simple electric circuit is just one of the many circuits that exist in our home, which serves our need for light every single day. <clears throat> Excuse me. To make a simple electric circuit, you just have to properly connect the battery and the light bulb using a wire. There is more than one way to make this simple electric circuit. The important thing, thing is, it only needs a cycle to be complete. Imagine how many circuits a building has, and these circuits are composed of series and parallel circuits. The electric circuits in a building are safe and functional thanks to the schematic diagram circuit. This diagram helps electrical engineers to communicate their plans and ideas to other electrical engineers. We rely on electricity more than we think we do. Just think about how many times you have turned on and off an electrical appliance or a circuit that that is how important electricity is to our daily lives. Quiz time direction. The following are situations that describe simple electric circuit. It's parts and types its parts and types. Choose the letter of the best answer. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will only give you 60 seconds per item. Okay? I have posted in the uh, Google Classroom where you can find the quiz file and where you will submit your answers. You can write down the letters of your answer on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, and then submit it. Or you can write your answers or type your answers in a uh, Google Docs file or any Word, Word file as long as you submit the quiz, uh, your answers for the quiz 
today at 12 p.m. Okay? Number one, timer starts now. Time's up, number two. Time's up, number three. Time's up, number four. Time's up, number five.
times up, number six. Time's up, number seven. Time's up, number eight. Time's up, number nine. Time's up, number 10.
I hope you learned something from our lesson for today class. Thank you so much for listening, my dear grade 5 students. This is your teacher Judea or teacher Dea signing off. Goodbye! Have a nice day!